Hey there guys, how's it going? So yeah, I basically wanted to talk about this past weekend's boxing. Um, this is Monday morning, I'll probably upload this later this afternoon. And yeah, this was a really great weekend for boxing, man. I really did enjoy it. There were some really good fights and some fights that really interested me. And obviously the main attraction this weekend was Manny Pacquiao turning back the years and with a sensational victory over over Keith Thurman. Um, yeah, I was very impressed by Manny Pacquiao. I was very happy about that, man. And um, yeah, I'll, I'll basically, I'll, I'll talk about that later in the video. But right now, I want to talk about the heavyweight fights that took place on, on the, um, the matchroom card. First of all, David Price defeating Dave Allen by a 10th round stoppage. I cannot tell you guys how happy I am about that. Now, <laughs> I've never made a video about Dave Allen before, but I planned to make one a few months back where I, I, I was planning a rant because I am sick and tired of seeing that guy's face. I am sick and tired of hearing his name, this Dave Allen guy. Like, he's always popping up on social media. Every time I log into YouTube, I'm seeing... I'm getting recommended videos of this guy and interviews with this guy. You know, Dave Allen's opinion on this and that and this and that. You know, stuff that he knows nothing about. Um, I mean, if, if you guys know anything about this Dave Allen guy and who he is, he's basically a glorified punching bag for hire. Okay, guys like Tyson Fury and Anthony Joshua and Dillian White and all these other British heavyweights use this guy as a punching bag in the gym. And he's basically too stupid to, to realize that, like, the guy's a complete idiot, like, if you've ever heard him speak, I, I don't know why anybody would ever listen to this guy's opinion on anything, he's a clown, and I, I was sick and tired of his face, sick and tired of his voice, and I'm so glad that now he seems to be contemplating retirement, but to be honest, he's been saying that he's going to retire for the past two years or so, and every time he says he's going to do it, he comes back and starts talking shit about how he wants to fight Povetkin and how he wants to fight Joshua. I mean, this guy would get this guy would get killed in the ring against somebody like Joshua. So I, I really urge people to stop encouraging this guy and stop egging this guy on because he's gonna get hurt. He is. He's trash. All right, the guy's a glorified punching bag. So yeah, thank thank God, David Price got that guy out of boxing, I don't ever want to hear his voice or, or, or see his face again, right, so moving on from that, um, as for David Price, David Price said that, it, well, well, he said in an interview with, uh, I believe it was with Coogan, he said that he would, he would welcome a, a, a rematch with Anthony Joshua, uh, sorry, a rematch with Alexander Povetkin, but the money would have to be right, <laughs> <laughs> that kind of made me chuckle. I'm like, yeah, yeah, P surely Povetkin's people, after Povetkin knocked David Price into next week, um, yeah, they're gonna they're gonna offer David Price life changing money for that rematch. I doubt it. Um, <laughs> but yeah, David Price. Look, I like David Price, man. I think he's entertaining to watch. I think he's a nice guy too. Obviously, he's said a lot of disrespectful things lately, but it's because he's pissed off with. Um, you know, being trolled and being, um, having the piss take out of him and his family and all that because of all the knockout defeats. And it's horrible that, that his family have been getting harassed and, and, you know, his kids have been getting the piss took out of them. I, I, I don't co-sign that at all. Uh, bullying is not cool. But, um, yeah, I'm, I'm glad that he managed to get himself a, a signature win. I'm glad because, like, like David Price said in the interview, he, he was basically saying what I just said about Dave Allen. So many people on social media were egging this guy on, like, so many people were up this guy's arse, you know, talking about, yeah, go on, Dave, this, that, and the other, and, yeah, David Price, you know, he basically expressed how satisfying it was to, to kick the guy's ass and get him out of boxing, and, yeah, um, where do I think he should go? I don't think Price should be even thinking about world level. We know that he doesn't have the ability. He doesn't have the chin, the stamina, the defense, the durability, or the confidence to be an elite level fighter. He needs to compete at domestic level. I would I would suggest try and get a fight against somebody like uh, Daniel Dubois or Huey Fury, you know, one of these younger heavyweights, one of these younger up-and-coming British heavyweights, maybe even Nathan Gorman who's coming off a loss. I think David Price could knock Nathan Gorman out. I don't rate him at all. Um, I, I, you know, obviously there's maybe Sam Sexton who's still hanging around. David Price did knock Sam Sexton out in the past, but... Um, you know, I'm, I'm just thinking of British level heavyweights, you know, guys who are around on the domestic scene. One name that was um, 
mentioned, I think, by somebody in the interview was potentially Alexander Usyk. Um, now, obviously, Alexander Usyk's an, a, a world-class fighter, but there would be some size difference in that fight, wouldn't there? So, I think if Usyk is looking to test his ability against a big heavyweight with power from distance, I think David Price is probably the perfect opponent for him. I wouldn't mind seeing that fight at all. You know, if Usyk is going to be fighting in September, supposedly against Takam, um, if Takam, you know, if the fight with Takam falls through and the fight with Takam doesn't happen, Takam's replacement could be Price. I wouldn't mind seeing that fight. So, yeah, it is what it is. Moving on from that, um, I want to talk about uh, Derek Chisora had a good knockout victory over Artur Spilka. Artur Spilka is a weird one. He really is. He, he, he's one I don't quite understand what's going through this guy's mind in the ring. In the first round, I thought he was making Derek Chisora miss and countering him pretty easily from the southpaw stance. Like he was, he was able to land his jab. He was landing some left hands, but it was like he was content to stand in the pocket with Chisora. And just and just fight Chisora's fight. I felt he got drawn in way too early. You remember when Spilka fought Deontay Wilder, and even when he fought Marius Vac, those guys were more powerful punchers than him. So he was cagey in those fights. He was defensive. He was moving around. He was using his jab. He was trying to counter with the left hand. And um, yeah, you know his lead hand, his jab. He would he would throw it to the body and he would move. And he was he was quite slick. But in his last few fights, like against against Adam Karnatsky and against Chisora. He just stands right there and he's there to be hit. So I think Spoker's a shot fighter. He's got a glass chin these days. He's got no stamina. His defense seems to be worse than it used to be. His, his reflexes seem to be shot to pieces. Um, so, yeah, it's really hard to, to say how impressive Chisora's victory was. It was an impressive knockout, but it was against a guy who's been knocked out on multiple occasions. So really don't know what to say about that. Um, as for um, as for Chisora, though, I... I would I like to see him get a title shot? Do you know what? He, he's a guy who he's tough, he's durable, he's got a good chin, he's, he's improved his stamina over the years, but he's taken too many beatings. And, and I think that if you're going to put him in, in against the absolute best in the division, you know, the top guys, like, we know he can't beat Tyson Fury. He got, he got beat by him twice. Um, Joshua's just too big and too powerful, in my opinion. And Wilder, Chisora could maybe you know, swarm Wilder and he could maybe outwork Wilder on the inside. But at some point, you know, Wilder's going to land his right hand and he's going to break him down and knock him out. So I don't really think Chisora will be a world champion, but he'll be in some fun fights. He's a, he's an interesting undercard attraction for some of these matchroom fights, you know, some of these cards. So yeah, it was, it was a, a, a fun fight while it lasted, but really meaningless to the, to the division. Um, as for Dillian White, who was the main event of that card, you know, Dillian, do you know who Dillian White reminds me of? He kind of reminds me of um, Saki Obika. You remember Saki Obika? And, and the reason I say that, and obviously there, are, there is a different dynamic because Bika was a super middleweight, but um, Bika was a guy who was very crude, you know, didn't really have great technique, didn't have very good skills, you know, was lacking in defense, had poor balance, but he was a guy who no matter who he fought, he always gave them a, a horrible fight. And the reason why is because he was so tough and so strong and so determined and so fit, like he was in great shape. And he used to, he was just so um, much of a nightmare for anyone he fought. Like you guys might remember, he gave Joe Calzaghe one of his toughest fights. He gave Andre Ward one of his toughest fights. You know, he gave Marcus Bayer a really tough fight. He gave um, Adonis Stevenson a pretty tough fight. Like, this is a guy who would go to your backyard and would always give you problems. He was a very tough and durable guy. And that's what I see from Dillian White. Dillian White's crude. He's not really that great technically. You know, he tends to slap. He tends to fall off balance. Um, he gets caught in moments where he shouldn't be. Like, he gets caught during his combinations. Um, you know, he's got decent enough technique behind his, like, his jab and his straight punches and his counter left hook. But he seems to me like a guy who... He, he relies so much on his strength and he relies on his on his street mentality, like his toughness, his physicality. It's a very dirty fighter, a very rough fighter. And and with all that being said, I genuinely believe that anybody in the heavyweight division will have problems with Dillian White. And I'm not necessarily saying he'll beat everybody. I'm not saying he'll beat Wilder. I'm not saying he'll beat Ruiz. I'm not saying he'll beat Joshua. I'm not saying he'll beat Fury. 
I'm not saying he'll beat any of those guys, but I am saying that he will give those guys a nightmare in the ring. Like, they will be so glad to see the back of him when the fight's over, is what I'm trying to say. So, yeah, Dillian White's a tough guy. He got dropped by Rivas in the ninth, but he got up, managed to win the fight pretty clearly and comfortably, in my opinion. Um, Dillian White's a warrior. The guy's tough. I, I'm, I'm not a fan of the guy, but he's but he's tough, and he's, he's a guy who is very difficult to stop. Only Anthony Joshua has been able to knock him out, and that was when Anthony Joshua was on the rise, and so was White at the time, they were both young, unbeaten prospects, so, um, yeah, I, I think that he's due maybe a title shot, it's his own fault he hasn't had a title shot, because he's turned down optional defences, he's turned down um, title eliminators, like against Pulev and against Ortiz, so, yeah, disappointing that, that that's the case, but I think that he would be fun in a title shot, you know, he would give, if he were to fight Deontay Wilder next, he would give Deontay Wilder, in my opinion, a much tougher fight than Luis Ortiz will. So, yeah, let me know what you guys think about that one. I want to talk about Manny Pacquiao now. Um, Manny Pacquiao is a legend of the game. Manny Pacquiao. What, what more can I say about Manny Pacquiao, man? I told you guys in my in my last video, in fact, in my Pacquiao should retire after Thurman video. Pacquiao's my hero. He he was my hero as a kid. Um, he he was he was one of my favorite fighters. He, he might not have been my absolute favorite at one point, but. I know for a fact when I was in high school, I used to watch Manny Pacquiao videos. I I remember being in IT class and <laughs> being on you know YouTube and shit, looking at Manny Pacquiao fights, man. And I, I was just a huge huge fan of the guy. And 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 it was really every time I watch Pacquiao now, I get flashbacks to to my to my younger years. You know, I get flashbacks to when life was simpler and when things were easier. And M Manny Pacquiao, man, look, he's just just a legend at forty years old. To roll back the clock like that, to go to America to fight a young, unbeaten, you know, world-class fighter, a guy who many people believe is number one in the welterweight division, okay, Keith Thurman, a guy that beat Danny Garcia, a guy that beat Sean Porter, a guy that's coming off a win against Jose Zito Lopez in a tough fight where he showed his resilience and his courage, you know, K Keith Thurman is a, is a quality fighter, okay, He's beaten the likes of Robert Guerrero on his way up and Leonard Bundu, guys like that. In those fights, he showed that he's not just a puncher, he's got stamina, you know, he can box and fight a hard 12 rounds. Thurman's a well-rounded fighter. Thurman's a very good fighter. And Pacquiao, at 40 years old, beat the shit out of him. I, I've got to say too, man, I, I, I get so pissed off with judging in boxing sometimes. I'm glad the right man won, obviously, Pacquiao got the decision on two of the cards, but that one fucking judge who gave Keith Thurman the decision, th that guy should be fucking sacked. Give that guy the, the sack immediately. Manny Pacquiao not only won this fight, I thought he pretty much dominated. In the, in the first eight rounds of this fight, and I know some people are going to disagree, I, I don't see what people were watching. I don't see what the commentators were watching. I thought Manny Pacquiao comfortably won the first eight rounds. He had a knockdown in the first round. You know, he was he was tagging Keith Thurman to the body. He was he busted Keith Thurman's nose up with the jab and with the straight left. You know, Keith Thurman had no answers. He had no idea what to do with Pacquiao. When he was on the run, Pacquiao would chase him. When he would stand and fight, Pacquiao would defeat him in the pocket. And when I when I said in my prediction video, you guys might remember in my prediction video, I said that the best chance for Manny Pacquiao to beat Keith Thurman is to not let Keith Thurman run. Like The best chance for Pacquiao to beat Thurman is to target the body early on and take away Keith Thurman's legs so Keith Thurman can't run and spoil and run away and steal a decision because that's what Thurman did against Lopez. And um, yeah, against Pacquiao, he couldn't do it because Pacquiao dropped him in the first round with, it was a right hook to the, I believe it was a, was it a left hand to the body then a right hook to the head. And um, yeah, he was he was targeting the body all the way through, and Pacquiao's body work was sporadic and it was fast. And Thurman was really feeling the pace after the fight. Thurman said that that his conditioning just wasn't on the level that Pacquiao's was, and that's surprising when you consider that Pacquiao's forty years old. But Pacquiao is a, is a great athlete. I mean, you see the workouts he does, you know, the insane like ab workouts that he does and all that, and and, and the insane like. Um, you know, where he's like lying on his back and he's just, he's doing the bicycle, they call it, in boxing gyms. And, you know, he, he just does, he, he'll do he'll sit and do that for hours. Like, he doesn't even get tired. You know, he'll skip for like fucking 20 minutes straight. Um, goes on these crazy long runs up the mountains, kind of like Joe Calzaghe used to. 
and and you know he'll he'll, he'll do rounds and rounds of of intense sparring. Like Manny Pacquiao's stamina is fantastic, and and what's scary about it is it's not even as good as it used to be. Like if you look at Pacquiao's training camps from back in 2009, just go and go on YouTube and look up Pacquiao sparring and training before the Miguel Cotto fight, and look at how much more intense and how much more um, fast paced his sparring camps were and his training camps. The the guy's a supreme athlete. The guy's a fucking warrior. When Keith Thurman would land a big right hand and then a left hook late in the fight, and Pacquiao would just bang his gloves together and be like, "Is that all you got?" Is that all you got? And then he'll throw a combination, which would make Thurman back up, and Thurman would be the the worse off. For, you know, he would get the worst of the exchanges. Pacquiao was getting the better of every exchange. Pacquiao was the aggressor throughout. Finished the fight strongly. You know, at the end of the twelfth round, you know, Pacquiao still wanted to fight. You know, he was still going after Thurman. He was like, yeah, 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 I'm not done yet. Come on. And you could just see Pacquiao was real hyped for this fight, man. Pacquiao was motivated extra for this one because of the. I think he was motivated extra for this fight because of Thurman's comments. Thurman was pretty disrespectful. You know, did did insult Pacquiao's faith and um, did call Pacquiao like an old man. Said he was going to retire him. Said he was going to send him into retirement. So Pacquiao wanted to make a statement in this fight, and we got flashes of the old Manny Pacquiao. So uh, yeah, I'm happy, man. Manny Pacquiao is a, a legend of the sport, absolute legend. Um, I, I had a great time watching this fight, man. I had a great time. This was a good work weekend for boxing, man. Loved it. So, yeah, let me know what you guys think. Um, Trying to think if there's anything else I want to I wanna mention. Um, I don't really know. Um, yeah, the lomachenko Campbell fight, apparently, is, is official now. And, you know, I, I'm, I might, if I can afford it, I might actually go to that fight. I might actually go down to London. I've not been to London in years. It's been a long time since I last went there. I think the last time I was in London... Was, was it like 2010, something like that? It was a long time ago I went there. So, um, yeah, I was, I, I might, you know, if, if, um, if my mate down south can get me tickets and, um, yeah, if I can, if I can afford it, you know, I'll, I might go down to London to see that fight, you know, we'll see. But, yeah, um, that's pretty much it. I'm looking forward to that one. Lomachenko Campbell is going to be a great fight, man. Um, yeah, I don't know what else to say. God bless Manny Pacquiao, you know. God bless you all. Thanks for watching.